Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for October the 12th, and the title of the episode is The Buying Season. Steve Hatherley won the RPG Publisher Spotlight this month, and I am in touch. The ball is in my court, so I'm sending over some questions. Steve, I think, might have something interesting to say about LARPs as well as TTRPGs, so I might go there. Have you ever done any live-action role-playing? I've been to The Gathering twice. That's a large fantasy LARP in the middle of the field, and I did that about a million years ago. And I've also spent many nights in pubs pretending to be a World of Darkness vampire, but I've not done that in about 20 years. This week, I emailed Canon Auto Studios, the geek native patrons, to send a copy of Teenage Odyssey 2. So if a coupon code for the game turns up in your inbox, that's why. Canon Otter Studios' Skin City is also currently live on Kickstarter. When you first hear about Skin City, the last bastion of humanity and the supernatural horrors outside the walls, your gamer mind might well assume that the game will be all about the struggle to keep the city safe. No. In the game, you're the skeletons disguised as humans trying to get in and sabotage the city. If your meat suit disguise gets damaged, then it doesn't really harm you, but you do get revealed as the monster beneath, and it makes your mission harder. I think that's a neat idea. Another publisher who impressed me this week was RTG and the Cyberpunk Red's lead developer Jay Gray. The company has been writing about the new rules in Tales of the Red, Hope Reborn. Firstly, the new rules add value, but are optional, so you don't need to buy the book. And secondly, even so, the vast majority of these new rules have already been given out in free downloads in Cyberpunk Red DLC. DLC, in this case, means PDFs. And that's a nice approach. The book has unique content, so it's not a paid-for clip show of old releases. But the rules that people might grumble about if they feel they have to pay for again for something to be complete are available for free. I do find myself asking, what would I pay for in the world of TTRPGs these days? Yes, I'll pay for core rules. No, I don't need any more. And I've never really been keen on pre-written adventures. If I am having to GM, then the adventure will be one that I've enjoyed writing. In my student days, when I was doing those vampire LARPs, I would eagerly buy the next clan book. But now that business model becomes a challenge. I see it. If the rules are important, then they shouldn't have been in the core book. And if they're optional, then I probably wouldn't splash the cash. The danger is that the publisher needs to up the stakes and release optional rules, let's call them big gun rules, that the players want access to for their sake, and so the GM feels compelled to buy them. And I think this happened with some clan books. And that's a challenge because people tire of that quickly. I think RTG's decision to give core but new rules away for free is better. Green Ronin's Backer Kit campaign for the Expanse RPG Transport Edition comes to mind. It's backwards compatible, and the new edition keeps the game up to date with the series it's based on, advancing the plotline. That also feels fair to me. As Bronwyn blogged Free League Publishing's next edition of the Alien RPG, the Evolved Edition does something similar, and it adds in alien Romulus content. I note that Free League have delayed the launch of that Kickstarter to better listen to the community, they say, and to work with 20th Century Studios. This week, Chaosium announced the community content program The Companions of Arthur. Like many community content programs, it will be hosted by DriveThruRPG, and it will let people write and sell Pendragon content. If we stick with our RPG business ponderings, then we can see that community content programs help ecosystems grow around the game and keep people engaged. It's drive-through RPG that gets a cut on sales, though. Do Chaosium? Well, if I was Chaosium, then I would have negotiated some. This is speculation, of course, because it's in neither company's interest to draw attention to such a deal, should one exist. 
and I'm reminded of fandom's attempt to create their own marketplace around Cortex. That didn't work out. Cortex was sold to Direwolf Digital, and we've not seen any life on the RPG socials in over a year. Lots of very intelligent people have been involved. Creating a new RPG is hard, and creating one coupled to the launch of a new marketplace must be a nightmare challenge. In other publishing and Bronwyn Penn news, Rebellion's cute little monster stunt is out this week. That's the same Rebellion who published 2000 AD and Judge Dredd, the Rebellion who bought the second oldest TTRPG in the world, Tunnels and Trolls, and has been very quiet about it ever since. Anyway, this week Rebellion is launching a new graphic novel line for kids called the Monster Fun Collection, and they have big billboard posters in London, Birmingham, Manchester and Glasgow, from which you can tear off your own A3 sheet of comic book goodness. I think this is an excellent way to get people curious, to get kids' attention, and perhaps summon up a bit of nostalgia from their parents too. This week we've had Prime Day, a chance for blogs like Geek Native to earn some pennies to pay towards hosting costs. And remember, we don't use Patreon money for that. Despite the importance of the shopping festival, we actually ran an equal amount of, shall we say, alternative content. We started with the Anyone But Amazon as a mega thread, and that listed other timely sales. For example, we had deals from Exalted Funeral, Fantasy Grounds, Redbubble, and Alienware. I also got so far behind with Bundle of Holding coverage, I did a mega thread of those too. And still live today, our deals on the sci-fi Beam Saber, horror in Kenneth Heights Cthulhu, conspiracy and occult threat in Unknown Armies, and cartography in Zero One's horror maps. And since we're on bundles, let me tell you about this incredible Jurassic World deal in Humble. It supports Girls Who Code too. Lastly, and part of Paradox Month of Darkness, there's a Humble deal on the world of darkness. This is unusual as it has more than one physical product in the top tier with shopping options for the US, Canada, New Zealand and Australia, but not Europe or Scandinavia. And on that note, sleep is good and see you next week.